Good morning, all of you. I am Pratika. I am going to teach you zoology subject. In zoology, we have three subjects, right? And we can say papers. We have three, right? Paper first is related to diversity of animals, right? In this, we will study how diverse animals are present in vertebrates. Study we will observe their different physiological systems, their pattern. How they are developed, etc. In paper second is cell biology and genetics. In this, we will study about the molecular substances present in the cell related to cell biology, right? That means different organelles, mitochondria, Golgi, ribosomes. All this we will study. And in genetics portion, we will study about plant breeding and uh, all mendels. Experiments and related to genetics, genes level, we will study, right? And paper third is developmental biology, in which we will study the development patterns of different organisms, right? That means here we will see how embryo is formed, and then after embryo formation, how different organisms attain different sizes and different. structures right so we will observe the whole scenario that how the development goes on so i can tell you the exam pattern as well that uh, all three papers will be conducted right and uh, first paper will be of 33 marks second paper will be of 33 marks and the last paper paper third will be of 34 marks this will be the pattern of the examination and all total it comprises 100 marks right so so logic subject examination papers we will be of 100 marks right and when we will discuss about the concerned paper then we can say that how the question comes is like if the paper is of 33 marks then nine short questions come that is of nine marks right and long question comes so this is the pattern of 33 marks right that we have to attempt all the nine questions which are short type questions containing each one marks So nine marks will be there from, and uh, second type will be of long question types. Every paper is divided into three units, right? And every unit will be having three questions, right? And from these three three questions, we have to attempt only four questions, right? That means from nine questions, we have to attempt only four questions. we will be having internal choices in every unit all right so each question from each unit and one question we can attempt from any of the units so we have to attempt like this four questions four questions each will be of six marks and this is the total 24 marks so we have a lot of internal choices in long questions but in short questions we have no choices right so it will be of 33 marks and the paper pattern of 34 marks will not be that much changed it will only contain that here 10 questions we will be getting of one marks and here like this 34 marks paper will be framed so this is the paper information how examination paper comes how university conducts examination and the marks distributed to each paper is like this total 100 marks and the rest 50 marks is of practical which we will be discussing on later on right so now I hope this will be clear to all of you. So I will be teaching you paper third, developmental biology. It is 
of 34 marks. We already discussed this. Uh, so first class should be like introductory class, right? So we are discussing some points or some definitions which we have already studied in 12th class, right? So phases of embryonic development. Alright, uh, embryonic development, when we will discuss about this, what is embryonic development? First question should be like this, which should come in our mind that what is embryonic development? We can say the development of embryo. So it has different stages through which embryo undergoes and then development occurs, right? So these stages will be just like this and first stage or first process of embryo development is gametogenesis. So what is gametogenesis? It is, we can say, the process of formation of gametes, right? It is the process of formation of gametes. So this is called as gametogenesis. But when we say that gametogenesis occurs in different in males and different in females, then they have different terms. We all know that. Right? That means if this process occurs in males and if this process occurs in females. So if it occurs in males is called as spermatogenesis and if it occurs in females then it is called as oogenesis. Right? That means spermatogenesis is the process of formation of male gamete we can say. Right? Or the process of formation of Firm or mature gamete. Alright. Secondly, oogenesis. It is the process of formation of female gamete, we can say, or secondly, it is the process of formation of ova. Right? In female body, or we can say, that in ovary it occurs in testes. So this is the complete definition of spermatogenesis that it is the process of formation of male gametes or sperm or spermatozoa the active form of the gamete which occurs in testes right or in this it is the process of formation of female gametes or ova which occurs in ovary to get itself and hormones regulate this process so when we say about spermatogenesis we know that in males only one hormone is there testosterone is present right but in females we have two hormones which regulate that is progesterone and estrogen. Alright, so female processes are a little much complicated we can say. Sometimes we say in males we have androgens as well but they are not much preferred to say, right? So gametogenesis we know what is the process. So how the gametes are formed? There are processes, right? So we can say that meiosis process is involved in the formation of gametes. Why meiosis? 
ठीक है वी कॉन्ट से दैट माइटोसिस इज नॉट देयर माइटोसिस इज आल्सो देयर फॉर मल्टीप्लिकेशन राइट सो वी कॉन्ट डिनाइ द फैक्ट दैट माइटोसिस इज नॉट देयर माइटोसिस अकर्स देयर बट मेन प्रोसेस ड्यू टू व्हिच वी से दैट गैमेट्स आर एन और वी कैन से गैमेट्स शुड बी एम्प्लॉयड दिस अकर्स ड्यू टू द मायोसिस प्रोसेस ओनली एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड राइट सो फर्स्टली वी कैन से दैट द गैमेट्स आर एम्प्लॉयड इन नेचर राइट दे आर फॉर्मड लाइक दिस ओनली दैट मींस दे हैव सिंगल प्लॉइड or single set of chromosomes haploid means they contain single set of chromosomes right so here meiosis occurs that's why they are haploid so in meiosis what is the activity or what process occurs which makes them haploid so we can discuss a little bit a short kind of meiosis here so meiosis is divided into two parts i suppose meiosis first and meiosis second right when we talk about meiosis first so it contains four stages prophase first metaphase first anaphase first and telophase first right and meiosis second also contains four stages prophase second metaphase second anaphase second and telophase second right so in this way meiosis is divided first we Lactoprotein stage here the chromosomes become 
मतलब that means they are just trying to become mature here. They are just thread-like structures and attached to one another, right? When we talk about zygote, the chromosomes mature, right? They are not in the stage. They are not thread-like. They mature. They try to combine as such zygote forms, right? Pegite crossing over occurs. Diploidy crossing over strands are removed and crossed, right? After crossed. They form chiasma structures, and then again, lastly, is dikinesis when they separate from each other and they travel to mitotic spindle fibers. Right. So in this way, after this metaphase first comes. Right. So they settle on the middle line, or we can say equatorial line, equator of. spindle fibers right so these are the five stages of prophase so we are talking that why the haploid gametes are formed because meiosis first occurs there and this meiosis first is called as reduction division all right this is called as reduction division and in this reduction of chromosomes occurs there so that's why when we have two n or diploid chromosomes but during gametogenesis they get converted to haploid right or one single set of chromosomes when we talk about meiosis second it is not a reduction division it is we can say just like mitosis right or equational division we can say that if we have two n chromosome set then after mitosis like or after meiosis again again we will have two n set of chromosomes so the main reason responsible before this is just these five stages into which our dna or our chromosomes enter and then change the scenario all right so this was all about gametogenesis process okay first phase of embryonic development so now we will talk about the second phase of embryonic development which is fertilization right now we come that what happens in fertilization right or what process occurs in fertilization in actual fertilization is a process in which fusion of two gametes occur right fusion of two gametes Occur and form a zygote which is diploid. So, what happens here is male gamete that is sperm and female gamete that is ova. They both are diploid and they fuse with each other. They are nuclei fuse with each other. and form a body called as zygote which is diploid or contains two set of chromosomes right that just means that in zygote the ploidy is maintained right because in starting male was of again two and diploid chromosomes it contain and female also contain diploid chromosomes so when we say meiosis occurred right after meiosis they were haploid and then again diploid so um we can say that restoration of chromosome set occurs after the formation of zygote body and this is all about fertilization 
second process of development then after fertilization what should occur is the third phase of fertilization which we call as cleavage right so what is cleavage again we have a question in mind that what is cleavage so cleavage is nothing but division of the zygote which is single cell structure so we can say that uh, during this process single cell structure called zygote is divided into many cell structures or multiple cell structures right or we can say this is a process of segmentation that means segmentation of the zygote so at first we can say that zygote is a single cell structure right then after divisions this single cell structure changes to multiple cell structure or multicellular structure in which different cells are present so at first zygote is single cell and we can say that whole embryo is formed from a single cell structure right so when we talk about cleavage in this process cleavage for rows are formed right which divides the cell into different cells so firstly one cell stage hai this is present then after cleavage it becomes two cells stage in which after first division two cells are formed then again after division four cell stage is formed in which four cells are formed due to cleavage then again after four cell stage there is eight cell stage so eight cell stage then again after eight cell stage there is a 16 cell stage of the embryo so we can say that from one cell stage to many cell stages cleavage occurs in between these stages and cleavage is the main reason behind the segmentation so what we say about cleavage cleavage is a kind of mitotic division it is not a mitosis uh, we can compare cleavage and mitosis but it is not mitosis but mitotic like divisions occur there which maintains the ploidy of the cell that means if cell is diploid then all the cells will be diploid and they all cells have same nature until they attain differentiation process right so this is all about we can say 16 cell stage then we say that during this stage a molecular stage comes right molecular so molecular is a structure it is named after the mulberry fruit which we say shehtoot right mulberry fruit was just like this so we called it molecular molecular structure has no cavity we say so it is a solid kind of structure no cavity and solid structure is this right so till now molecular is formed and why it is named molecular we have came across this then we talk about fourth process plastulation what we see is 
that this is module right a solid structure in which cells are very closely arranged so blastulation we can say is the process of formation of blastula right from morula that means it processes blastulation so this is a process and in the blastula like structure is formed so when we talk about blastula it is derived from morula here again cleavage occurs and 64 cell stage or we can say if it is 8 to 16 cell stage then it can be 32 to 64 cell stage right this is blastula so when we talk about blastula we have a special feature of blastula present in this that means the outer layer of blastula is called as blastoderm right just like our skin outer layer is called as ectoderm so there it is called as blastoderm because it is the layer of blastula right and the cells arranged in this are called as blastomeres right and the cavity present in between is blasto c so this is the cavity present in between the blastula which is or which can be a fluid filled cavity next we talk about the fifth phase that is gastrulation so we can say the process is a gastrulation process and in this gastrula structure is formed uh, so we can say gastrula is a process of formation of gastrula from blastula so after blastula gastrula is formed so how this is formed we can see this right a uh, somewhat structure is like this gastrula um then we see that what happens in gastrula right this type of structure is formed so in gastrula there is formation of three germ layers namely ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm that means all three layers are formed in gastrula due to movement of cells right cells arrange themselves by different movements which are known as gastrulation movement right because it occurs in the phase of gastrulation so in this phase what movements come under are known as gastrulation movements and cells move in arranged stances like this structure so when we talk about these so the outer layer is ectoderm the middle layer is mesoderm and the innermost layer will be endo here also we have a cavity right and 
and this cavity is known as archentera you must remember this name archentera right so we can ask some sort of short questions can come on this way then what is the cavity of blastula so it is blastocele and what is the cavity of gastrula so it is archentera secondly uh, just above this cavity we have a opening which is known as blastopore right because the structure is formed from blastula so the pore or opening is called as blastopore right we see here a small pore and now on this opening development of different organisms depend right like uh, if we see blastopore right if this opening is present and it forms the mouth region of certain organism then these organisms are called as protostomes and if we see from this part anus is formed then these organisms are called as deuterostomes so sometimes questions can be asked or framed on this that what are protostomes or what are deuterostomes so we can say if from the blastopore structure firstly mouth is formed then organisms are called protostomes uh, the name itself says proto means first right and stome means or we can say stoma means mouth so when firstly mouth is formed organisms are protostomes and mouth region is formed from blastopore right so they are protostomes secondly if blastopore region forms first anus and the opposite side of blastopore forms the mouth then it is called as deuterostomes and the most common example of deuterostomes is we itself that is humans right humans are the examples of deuterostomes where blastopore forms the anus part firstly and then mouth is here mouth is formed firstly from this part and anus is formed from the another part another side of the gastrula so in this way we can say protostomes and deuterostomes are divided secondly protostome examples are small or we can say lower vertebrates right so in this way gastrulation process is completed now we see that we divide gastrulation into two parts first is pre gastrulation and second is post gastrulation right pre gastrulation is the phase in which blastula prepares itself to undergo gastrulation and gastrulation process occurs three strong layers are formed by the movement or gastrulation movements right now what we can call about post gastrulation is after the formation of gastrula a new structure neurula is formed right and the formation of neurula occurs during post gastrulation phase right in this neurula structure the process will be called as neurulation because neurula is formed in this and the structure formed in this is neural plate right so from this neural plate nerves brain part will be formed nervous system brain anterior part will be formed noto cord neural cord jo hum bolte hain right nerve cord so all these structures are formed from these neurula structures right and now what we say about blastula that the precursor of blastula right precursor of blastula is morula and after blastula gastrula is formed 
So most formation is gastrula. The most formation of gastrula is gastrula, and the pre-formation of gastrula is mole. Right? So when we define gastrula, we define both these structures as well. That means blastulation is a process in which blastula is formed from the morula and from the structure it gets converted to gastrula. We can define in such a way. So the definition is completed this way. Now, we talk about the six phase after gastrulation organogenesis so organogenesis is a process of formation of organs right and when these all organs combine together then they are called as organ system so the formation of organ system is known as organogenesis. Now we talk about how the organs are formed. So we can say that cells combine together to form tissues. Tissues combine together to form organs. Organs combine together to form organ system. And organ system comprise our organism. Right? So in this way organogenesis process occurs, there is always a pre-organ or we can say organ rudiment present there which later on after development develops organ. Right? So during embryogenesis organ rudiment is present there which will later on form the prescribed organ or the developed organ after the developmental process. Right? So this is all about organogenesis. Next, we talk about seventh phase that is morphogenesis. So, what is morphogenesis? Morphogenesis just means if genesis is there, that means formation and morpho means structure. That means if external structures are formed, then or the factors which define the external structure are known as morphogens because they are agents or factors and the process is known as morphogenesis. So in this external structures are formed. Right? Or we can say uh, in this process the body attains the structure and continue to develop in that process. Like we see in ourselves we have nose, we have eyes, we have hands. So our morphology is like this. External morphology is all about morphogenesis. Next we talk about differentiation process. So we say that differentiation is a process in which cells attain different functions. Right? Uh, right? So differentiation that means cells are undergoing a different process so that they can call it as different cells. So differentiation can be divided into three types on the basis of what they are undergoing to. First is morphological differentiation. Second is physiological differentiation. And third is we can say biochemical differentiation. So, morphological differentiation can also be called as psychological differentiation. Physiological can be called as functional differentiation because it depends upon the function and biochemical differentiation. So, uh, in this morphology of cells is attained, in this
physiology of cells is our being so they are differentiated according to function and in this biochemical that means structures are attained or we can say micro or macromolecules are described in the cells so on these three bases differentiation can be divided now if we take the example of morphological differentiation then we can see like in muscle cells or nerve cells right morphology is very much different so they are differentiated like muscle cells have the structure like this and they have bands in that right they have striations there and nucleus while in nerve cells their structure is very much different from muscle cells Like in this, we have dendrons, cyton, exon, and these are terminal buds. So, on the basis of structure, we can say this is the nucleus part. That cells are differentiated like this. That muscle cells are different in structure. Now, cells are different in structure. Function. If we compare both these cells. then their function is also different like when we talk about muscle cells their main function is contraction right or movement and we talk about when nerve cells their main function is conduction of impulse right or we can say they transduct the signals right so their function is also different so they are differentiated on the basis of function and thirdly when we talk about biochemicals it comprises of proteins and structures which are made by biochemicals so in this muscles formation we say actin and myosin are present as biochemicals when we talk about nerves we say that they contain acetylcholine right so chemical composition is also there different so when we talk about the eight process differentiation there the cells attain different functions different structures different biochemicals and they are differentiated like to perform different functions of the body right and the last one is process is growth so when we talk about growth growth is just not the division of cell right it is also increasing in height so growth occurs from embryo right till the individual attains its fully height or attains the full height. so growth is not just concerned with the cells it is also concerned with the height of the organism with the age of the organism right so here phases of embryonic development contains nine phases firstly gametogenesis gametes are formed secondly fertilization both these gametes are fused thirdly we say cleavage that means segmentation occurs fourthly we say after segmentation blastulation process occurs blastula is formed fifthly gestulation process in which gestula is formed and three germ layers occurs then sixthly we say after gestulation in post gestulation stage neurula occurs and after that what we see there is after gestulation organogenesis process occurs organs are formed seventhly we say that after organogenesis we there form morphological structures so morphogenesis occurs then eighthly we say differentiation that means cell is defined to different pathways so that full body structures can be formed in different ways and plus all the 
functions of the body can be performed easily. And ninthly, lastly, is growth in which individual attains its height, not only the cells but also the individual growth. So, nine phases of embryonic development can be seen.